Amen. <clears throat> wow, is Sister Morton excited? <laughs> it's contagious. Uh, Sister Morgan had a presentation with the lay Bible training, the first uh, class we had in preparation for our series. And uh, one of the things I was really thankful for is Sister Morgan has a, 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 a good understanding of the warfare that you enter in upon when you do evangelism. And, uh, you know, the Bible says we don't war against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in what? High places. So we need to be praying. We need to be zealous and fervent in prayer and in, in our studies. And uh, the Lord's going to bless us because Jesus came to call sinners to repentance and which we are to also sinners. So let's be about our Father's business. All right, let's, uh, we're going to have to work in tandem today for some reason. In two weeks, Zoltan guarantees we're going to get a whole new system <laughs> and fix this up. So you can go to the next slide again. And uh, yeah, let's just say one more quick prayer. But I just wanted to pray one more time for your Holy Spirit to be with us. And, you know, de dealings with technical difficulties. But, Lord, none of it really matters. You don't need all of this. You don't even need me. You don't need the church. You could just make an announcement from heaven that everyone in the whole world could hear all at once. But you want us, even though we're faulty and things break down, things don't always work, you want us to be part of telling souls, people about Jesus. Because there's nothing more powerful than our testimony of what you have done for us. That makes it real to them. So, Lord, be with us now. And no matter what happens, may we just have joy in our hearts and be thankful for we know Jesus lives. We ask it in his name. Amen. Another thing, let's have somebody turn down a couple of these air conditioners because I am hot. So anybody, doesn't matter who you are, you don't have to be. Zoltan's going to do that too. Okay. <laughs> now, Eva, and very interesting what Eva shared before. Um, and I kind of did a lot of things went into Mother's Day. And this is just one more thing. Listen to this. Anna M. Jarvis first suggested the national observance of her annual day honoring all mothers because she had loved her own mother so dearly. At a memorial service for her mother on May 10th, 1908, Miss Jarvis gave a carnation, her mother's favorite flower, to each person who attended. Within the next few years, the idea of a day to honor mothers gained popularity and Mother's Day was observed in a number of large cities in the U.S. On May 9, 1914, by an act of Congress, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. He established the day as a time of, for public expression of our love and reverence for the mothers of our country. By then, it had become customary to wear white carnations to honor departed mothers and red to honor the living, a custom that continues to this day. Uh, you could advance that slide. It says, no one deserves a special day all to herself more th than a today's mom. A cartoon once showed a psychologist talking to his patients. Let's see, he said, you spend 50% of your energy on your job, 50% of your hus on your husband, and 50% on your children. I think I see your problem. All right, let's, let's go on. There's an old Irish saying that says a man's work is from son to son. You've heard this, but a woman's work is what? Never done. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, and... Jade, I want you to be looking at me because when I raise my hand, I want you to change the slide, okay? Because there's some pictures there I want you to change. It says, if you can find a truly good wife, she is worth more than precious gems. Her husband can trust in her, and she will richly satisfy his needs. She will not hinder him or help her all her life. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She buys imported foods brought by ship from distant ports. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household, 
plans the day's work for her servant girl. She goes out to inspect the field and buys it. With her own hand, she plants a vineyard. She is energetic, a hard worker, and watches for bargains. She works far into the night. She sows for the poor and generously helps those in need. She has no fear for winter for her household, for she has made warm clothes for them all. She also upholsters with finest tapestry. Her own clothing is beautifully made, a purple gown of pure linen. Her husband is well known, for he sits in the council chamber with the civic leaders. She makes belted linen garments to sell to the merchants. She is a woman of strength and dignity and has no fear of old age. When she speaks, her words are wise, and kindness is the rule for everything she says. She watches carefully all that goes on throughout her household and is never lazy. Her children stand and bless her. So does her husband. He praises her with these words, there are many fine women in the world, but you are the best of them all. Does the father say that to the mothers? <laughs> we should, right? We should, right, fathers? Charm can be deceptive, and beauty doesn't last. Isn't that the truth? But a woman who fears and reverences God shall be greatly praised. Praise her for the many fine things she does. These good deeds of her shall bring her honor and recognition from people of importance. Can you say amen? A teacher gave her class of second graders a lesson on the magnet and what it does. The next day in a written test, she included this question. My full name has six letters. The first one is M. I pick things up. What am I? When the test papers were turned in, the teacher was astonished to find that almost 50% of the students answered the question with the word mother. <laughs> when Robert Ingersoll, the Nestorius skeptic, was in his heyday, two college students went to hear him lecture. As they walked down the street after the lecture, one said to the other, well, I guess he knocked the pro props out from under the Christianity, didn't he? The other said, no, I don't think he did. Ingersoll did not explain my mother's life, and until he can explain my mother's life, I will stand by my mother's God. An old Spanish proverb said, an ounce of mother is worth a ton of priest." Charles Spurgeon, Baptist preacher, he once said this of his mother. I cannot tell how much I owe to the prayers of my good mother. I remember her once praying, Now, Lord, if my children go on into sin, it will not be from ignorance that they perish, and my soul must bear swift witness against them at the day of judgment, if they lay not hold on Christ and claim him as their personal Savior. A little boy forgot his lines in a Sunday school presentation. His mother was in the front row to prompt him. She gestured and formed the words silently with her lips, but it did not help. Her son's memory was blank. Finally, she learned forward and whispered in the queue, I am the light of the world. The child beamed and with great feeling in a loud, clear voice said, My mother is the light of the world. <laughs> in, the book of, birth, excuse me, in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 11 and 12, it says, Neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as woman came from a man, even so man also comes through a woman. So you see this interconnectedness between man and woman is God-ordained. It cannot be separated. 
We are all created equal in God's sight. Back in the Garden of Eden, as we go back to the book of Genesis, chapter 2, in verse 21, it says, The Lord God called a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh. I'd like to share with you just a, an interesting story about Thomas Edison. Lillian Jones writes that on a, on a great biographer, Ida M. Tarbell's 80th birthday, someone asked her to name the greatest person she had ever met. She responded, the greatest persons I have ever met are those nobody knows anything about. Once the New York Times was asked to help a group of club woman, women decide on the 12 greatest women in the United States. After due consideration, the editors replied, the 12 greatest women in the United States are women who have never been heard of outside of their own homes. Jones concludes, I ask you, who was greater, Thomas Edison or his mother? When he was a young lad, his teacher sent him home with a note which said, Your child is dumb. We can't do anything for him. Mrs. Edison wrote back, You do not understand my boy. I will teach him myself. And she did, with the results that are well known. You know, God uses illustrations in the animal kingdom to depict his love for all mankind, for you and I. In Proverbs chapter 17, verse 12, there's a Bible text that says this, It is safer to meet a bear robbed of her cubs than for a fool caught in his folly. Any of you have ever run across a bear out in the wilderness like I have, you know what I'm talking about, especially if it's with its cubs. And in Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, Jesus said this, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who s are sent to her, how often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. <coughs> There's a story I'd like to share. Years ago, a young mother was making her way across the hills of South Wales, carrying her tiny baby in her arms when she was overtaken by a blinding blizzard. She never reached her destination, and when the blizzard had subsided, her body was found by searchers beneath a mound of snow. But they discovered that before her death, she had taken off all her outer clothing and wrapped it around her baby. When they unwrapped the child to their great surprise and joy, they found that he was alive and well. She had molded or mounded her body over his and given her life for the child, proving the depths of her mother of a mother's love. Years later, David Lloyd George, grown to manhood, he became Prime Minister of Great Britain and without doubt one of England's greatest statesmen. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15 and 16 says, Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of a womb? It's almost unfathomable to think that a woman would forget 
a small little child. But sad to say it does happen. But what does God say? Yea, they may forget, yet I will not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Please go back. Thy walls are continually before me. God's love for us is greater than that even of a mother for her child. You know, when Jesus hung on the cross on Calvary, one of the last things he did is recorded here in John chapter 19, verses 25 through 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. John 19, 25 through 27. You know, thank you. We can advance that slide. This is a picture of my mother. This is going to be the first Mother's Day that I'm not going to have my mother. And she was such a special person. And not only was she she my mother, but she was also my sister's mother, who was also a mother. And I wanted to just acknowledge my sister Lois also, who gave so much of her heart and soul to my mother and took care of her in the later, latter years of her life. Day and night in hospice, while the rest of us left, my sister stayed with her. So I just want to say thank you, Lois, for doing that. You've been a good mother, and you treated our mother well. And I also like to acknowledge my wife, Barbara. She wished she could be here, but she was not able to come today. Most of you know why. But when I first saw Barbara and I first met her, she was a nanny in New Jersey. She was just in the last senior year of high school, going into the senior year. And that summer, between junior and senior, she got a job in New Jersey as a nanny taking care of children. She took Amtrak all the way from Boise, Idaho, all the way to New Jersey. And that summer, she was a nanny. And before she went back, she came to where I was working in staff meeting. We had, we had a mutual friend. or She had a friend. We Sooner or later, we became mutual friends. <laughs> and uh, when I got to talk with her and know what she was doing, I said, wow. I said, that girl's going to make a good mother one day. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I married her, because I knew she would be a good mother. You know, she is the most wonderful mother uh, I, I could have ever have dreamed of. My kids love and adore her, you know. I mean, daddy's okay. You know, daddy's the preacher. <laughs> you know how it is. But uh, mom is mom. And mom gets all the phone calls, and mom spends time talking to them about their little issues and problems. And they're all grown up now, but you never stop being a parent. You never stop being a mother or father. You will love your kids until the day you die. And you will do anything for them. Like that mother who sacrificed her life for her child. We would all do the same. In a heartbeat, wouldn't we? In a heartbeat. So, from me to you, Jupiter Church, Palms West Church, I would just like to tell you today, happy Mother's Day. And I want to just say God bless you all. And before we pray, Sonia, uh, do we have a couple of things we want to do right now? Where's Sonia? Somebody go find Sonia. <laughs> Hopefully she didn't go home yet. But um, we did a couple of things for the mothers, right? And... Uh, we talked about that. We got a couple more things we're going to do, right, Arthur? So go find Sonia. She's 
She's probably dealing with the children somewhere. She, she's a good mother, too, isn't she? <laughs> Sonia, I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> I thought you went home to walk the dog. <laughs> no, Sonia, come on up here for a minute. One of the things we want to do is acknowledge a few mothers here today. And so, Sonia, I'm going to let you uh, uh, speak a little bit to that. I guess we don't have the handheld mics anymore, but we're going to get new ones in two weeks, Arthur. Mark it down. <laughs> so here comes Zoltan, our audio technical guy. And so, Sonia, go ahead. Pastor knows how much I love to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Miss Morgan, would you please stand? Would you please come up here? On behalf of the Jupiter Seventh-day Adventist Church, we want to tell you that we love you and appreciate all the work that God is doing through you, and we want to thank you. So we have a special gift for you. <laughs> she heard me, she just doesn't want to talk. <laughs> She's like me. <laughs> Marty, we are your church. We love you so much. And we're so, so sorry about your loss. And we just want to tell you that you are a wonderful mother and a wonderful woman and a wonderful wife and that we love you very much. And we just wanted to extend Thank our you. love to you to give you a little gift Thank to you. cheer you Amen. up. Amen. Amen. We love you. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Sonia. Let's pray. What are we going to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Barbara, if you're watching, which we know you are, we just want to tell you that even though you're not here, we love you, and we thank you for lending us pastor every seven, and we have something special for you as well to tell you that even though you can't be here, that we're still thinking of you and praying for you, and we love you, sister, so have a blessed Mother's Day. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we all came here. We all have a mother. We all came into this world through a woman. And you created man and woman on the sixth day of creation. You brought them together as one. And Lord, we just want to thank you for saving us, for creating us, but also for redeeming us. Because our world fell into sin, which brought death and pain and suffering. But we look forward to the day when Jesus will come. And those of us who lost our mothers will see them again. And those mothers who lost children all too soon will see their children again. And there'll be a wonderful day of reunion. And like my mother used to say, every holiday when we used to get together, when all the family was there, and one day I believe she'll say again when she sees her family again, she'll say, my heart is full. So bless us till that day. Give us strength. May we just appreciate the family we do have. 
that we still have, not only our blood family, but those of us here in both the Palms West and Jupiter churches, for we are part of the family of God. Bless us now, dear Lord, as we depart and go our separate ways. Until we meet again, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.